Good morning, everybody. It is the 13th of March, 2018, and we are looking at the uh, open of our trading day today. I'm just kind of taking a peek at what we have going on in our markets. Um, we've got, we just did, had some news come out. If I can find my little notes here. <clears throat> we just had uh, a consumer price index CPI come out. Um, and so we are sitting at, what am I looking at here? Uh, better than expected. Previous was 247.86. Actual was 248.99, so it was slightly a bit over, and uh, the consensus was 248.936. So, you know, really not much of a anything. Oops. So what do you do? Taking a look at what has moved on that news, let's just take a real peek here. Gold moved, shot up here. Euro shot up. Uh, uh, dollar yen traded has traded down a little bit. Aussie dollar has shot up, and the New Zealand dollar has shot up. And actually, looking to short the New Zealand dollar. I'm trying to find where where I put our chart from yesterday. Hmm. Well, that's all right. I made a new one, but we'll use this one. Okay. So, if you remember, we were uh, discussing the uh, uh, Ichimoku system, which we're kind of going to be focusing on for a little bit and uh, using this as our kind of basis and our look at the markets as we're going forward. Now, so if you remember yesterday, we have three levels that we're using. We're using three Ichimokus and um, We have an eight hour, which is the blue, the four hour, which is the orange, and the one hour, which is our, our red and green here, okay? And so this is how we are going to kind of look at taking our trades moving forward here. Now, um, Ichimoku means the market at a glance. It is a fantastic, wonderful, robust, time-tested and honored system, and, and we should really look at it as a wonderful system and tool to use, especially if you are finding difficulty finding profitability in the markets, all right? Now let's go over our trades from yesterday. Pull that up here. So yesterday we wanted to go long on the dollar yen at 106, Point six one, which has turned out to be very nice. Okay, you current. Let's see where we're at currently in the Ichimoku system. So we are, <clears throat> excuse me. We are uh, right now. We are above the cloud on the hourly, and the lagging span um, was was touching to break out. Um, as we move forward, as long as we don't really travel much lower, we should look to see uh, uh, another long opportunity here. And what we're looking for is the bounce off of the 106.76 or uh, just a higher price where we get a, oh, maybe I should bring it down to the hourly. There we go. Okay. So just a tiny bit of a, of a you know, this is news related, not, not always fun to trade right during these times, but it's good to review where we were at. 
So if we're looking at the dollar yen, we had a good uh, trade at at the 106.1, and the this is actually a pretty good example. So you know where do you re-enter long on something if you've already missed it? Okay, well that's pretty easy. It's it's a fairly easy way to look at it. We could we could go long at a pullback to the conversion line, which is the blue line, or a pullback to the baseline, which is the red line, or to the top. There's actually four areas that you can enter: the conversion line, baseline, the bottom of the cloud, top of the cloud, or the bottom of the cloud. All right. So that's what we're kind of looking at here. As we're looking at our chart, we see, well, we'll, we'll come back to this. So the, the long yesterday worked out beautifully, beautifully, <laughs> beautifully in our dollar yen pair. And then we had a euro short. We wanted to go short at 122.94. Now that, that short was not something that actually played out. Uh, oddly, right now we see that we we have higher highs in the euro and the yen, dollar yen pair, so that's a little different. We are inside the cloud, so we are in a, a consolidation zone on the euro. So we're not looking to take a trade right now. Okay. Notice that price is inside the cloud. It's really inside all four, or all three of them. It's inside the one, the four, and the eight. So this is a sign of consolidation and indecision. It's like a Bollinger Band squeeze. So we're not currently looking to take a trade in the euro right now. We're only looking to take a trade in the euro when we cross above, okay? I feel that when we are inside all of these zones like this, I only like to take trades when our lagging span, the uh, black line, when that trades above these clouds, all right? So I don't wanna go long above it or go uh, short below this, this uh, activity. You're really on the hourly, you could still do that. So no 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 trade on the euro until we break above or below the cloud on both price and the lagging span. Now taking a look at um, the gold trade, we wanted to go short at a pullback to 13 uh, oh, where are we at? To 1319. Now we did get a pullback to 1319, and you know, right now just looking at this price action, um, you know, this is not looking the best either way. If we look at the, our lagging span, um, that's back, you know, really sometimes you, I got to make this thicker. It's hard for me to see it sometimes. So there's our lagging span back here. And it's inside the cloud now. But prices up above the cloud so this is this is in the, when when the lagging span is inside the cloud as well we don't like to take trades so really what we want to wait for is a return to um, we want to see the lagging span cross above the cloud to go long or we want to see prices return back down where the lagging span would be low we'll re-enter when the lagging span and price are both below the cloud okay and looking at the euro now the euro or sorry, not the euro, the euro pound. The euro pound, we wanted to go short at a pullback to 88.77, which we did get, and that is currently still active, only about four pips in profit on that one. Um, and why did we want to go short there? Well, we wanted to go short because that pullback zone brought us you know, to the conversion line, the baseline, and near the bottom of the cloud. And the cloud is thick on the hourly, so that, that should signal some uh, 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 a sign of, of resistance to higher prices. So we should be looking at that as a, uh, as a short opportunity right here, okay? So that has worked out, and actually, at point eight eight seven three, that is a good short right now. And I need to enter that one myself. Okay. Now, looking at the next one we had was the UCAD. And on the US dollar Canadian dollar, oh crap, I left that short early. Dang it. <laughs> um, UCAD, we wanted to short at a pullback to. 128.48, which was up here. 
Uh, right there. Now, again, actually kind of want to do that. Yeah, we want to do that here where you enter the cloud. So um, price is inside the cloud, but the lagging span is not. So we're looking at, this is kind of a, a, a uh, odd, not an odd situation, but it's one where you may be wondering, you know, well, well, what do you do here? What do you do when you, the lagging span is outside of the cloud, which is signals that the, that, that this is a good area to be shorting, but the price is inside the cloud. So what do you, what do you do when that happens? Well, we want to look at where the conversion line and the baseline are, and then where price closes relative to that. It's, we're, we're really safe re-entering short once price gets below the cloud. But we're also looking at, um, you know, the same kind of pop probability and, and, and trade setup when we are, are below these, these conversion lines, as long as we're still below the cloud in the, uh, in the uh, uh, if I can talk, blech. as long as we're still below the cloud in the uh, lagging span, all right? Okay. Looks like UJ is taking a bit of a nosedive here. Is that right? Let me take a look. Oh, yeah. So actually, this is a good re-entry on a long because we come back down to the baseline. Okay, so notice how price bounced off of that on the hourly. So that, to me, is a good re-entry on the long there. A little bit of a, uh, uh, probably a little bit of a bear trap being set up here. Got to be aware of that. Um, and the dollar index is showing a little bit of a fake out here. <laughs> uh, that's kind of funny. Okay, now let's see where we at, where we at, where we at. Next trade was AUD JPY. So we wanted to go uh, uh, long at 83.82, which we did get. Or pull back to 83.67 or 83.39. We really just kind of had a nice trend up. And, and again, if we are looking at this entire price zone here, um, if we're looking at uh, we're inside the eight hour, but we're above the one, we're above the two, we're inside the eight. So there's a good chance that this trend is pretty strong here. And buying on the pullbacks to the conversion in the baseline area is a good um, 84.20. So that is a good long entry currently on AUD JPY. Good we're catching these moves right away as we're talking. Okay, the dollar Swiss, AKA the dollar index. It's not really the dollar index, but it moves like the dollar index. Looking at this, so what we have is a pretty strong drive down. And this is where my own market experience and intuition is giving me kind of a, a danger Will Robinson scenario where I am not liking this price action here because it does not look normal. It looks a little excessive and overdone. So I really, again, we're like right after a news release, a major news release, CPI. So we, we really don't want to be involved in a lot of of a, a trading activity right now, it's just not a, uh, it's just not a a good time to be looking and trading these pairs while we're waiting to see what happens with the rest of our with the rest of our moves. Okay, and let's see, we had our other trade was um, Aussie Canadian dollar. I don't think we yeah really nothing to speak about this one. I looked at it earlier. 
the euro, Aussie dollar. Um, wasn't really looking at much going on here either. Don't really enjoy this really thin clouds. Not fun to trade in or around. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar. We wanted to short on a break below the conversion line of, where are we at? USDCAD, where are we at? Here we are. Okay, um, uh, we wanted to go short at a break below the conversion line, 128.10. Oh yeah, we had different, um, different, uh, uh, trade setups here yeah we'll see about this one this actually might turn into a long if we can get back above that cloud and then uj again a long on a pullback to 164 so let's look at uj we just took a buy on the baseline there which is turning out to be just fine so far um that is good now let's go let's take a quick look at our our cryptocurrency so the uh Bitcoin still floating around in consolidation, Litecoin, Ethereum. I mean, there's really not much to look at in our cryptos. They're all kind of in a tight consolidation range still. And uh, they may be setting up for another uh, uh, expansion wave down. We'll just have to, we'll have to see what happens there. Um, okay, now, taking a look. We'll see how convinced the dollar bears are this morning. So on gold, so on a move like this, I'm looking at this kind of an area. I'm looking at what is happening at the top of the cloud here on gold. At you looking at this, so you know we we traded pretty we've traded pretty heavily above here. This is a big big candle. I mean, look at the <laughs> this is a, a large wick variance, and um, I'm looking at where is it finding some difficulty getting above? Well, right above the the four hour cloud. Um, it's it's looking a little weak here, and it's not looking like it's got a lot of oomph behind it. So we could be looking at a, a, a pretty strong break down from this zone. We'll just have to keep an eye on that. Um, you know, yeah, we'll just follow the, follow the Ichimoku rules. I'll try not to supplement my own in here and just follow the rules. <laughs> Euro dollar. Okay. Where did we find some resistance? At the top of the clouds here. We also found resistance at this Fibonacci. Found resistance at the 50 uh, retracement of our Fibonacci from our, from our swing here. And that is looking fairly bearish for the euro dollar pair. You know, certainly finding resistance at the top of the eight hour, which is also near the... the you know, forward here in time, the, the four hour. And, you know, we're technically still neutral on our trade opinion because of where we're at. We haven't closed above the cloud yet and the lagging span is not above that either. So we're just kind of watching and waiting and looking to see what happens here, okay? UJ, trade's working out fine still, um, taking our long at the, uh, at, at the baseline here and it looks like we may be crossing back up to our conversion so we're still healthy on this pair because we are still above the cloud in both price and the the lagging span Aussie dollar US dollar so we may have a very bullish bias here but we want to wait to see what happens till after the news okay we are we are trading above the one the four and the eight and our so the, this is the one hour lagging span. Before we, when, right when we started, I, I clicked off these others because, oops. So I sometimes will place the, the, uh, the eight and the four hour lagging spans on here just to get some context, okay? So as I'm looking at the, the Aussie dollar pair, I noticed that you know, right now we are still above the cloud on the eight hour and, and the eight, four and one hour. And then as I look over here, the Aussie dollar is 
slightly kind of touching a little bit above the four hour cloud and we're really inside the eight hour over here. So just kind of keeping a look on this as a pretty extended move. Technically, we've got a somewhat parabolic move on the Aussie dollar. Again, parabolic is where you have an uptrend that continues to have higher uh, slopes as you go up. So uh, parabolic moves, no matter what you're looking at in any system, uh, should not be used as they, they should be uh, traded against, not as a look of a confirmation of something. New Zealand dollar, very similar situation. We have a fairly parabolic move here on the New Zealand dollar. And, you know, we're seeing that we are above the one, the four, and the eight. But this is looking almost to be kind of a somewhat of a false move. And, yeah, we're going to really want to keep an eye on what's happening over here with this guy. The pound dollar, very big move. Wow, that was a rocket ship of a launch there looking at those really want to see how the rest of our markets are going to respond to this activity pound dollar is always a big mover euro pound Okay, so we are showing, you know, we do have that sell signal that we just took a little bit ago here on the Euro Pound um, at 8873. That's working out fairly well so far. And let's see, what else do we have here? Okay, US dollar, Canadian dollar, showing a little strength here. So, you know, really, if we get back above the one hour cloud on the US dollar, on the, on the, Looney, US dollar, Canadian dollar in price and lagging lagging span, we should be pretty we should be pretty bullish and for a re-entry because we're we're well above the eight and the four. So that's a pretty strong longer term trend looking at the eight and the four hour here. Notice the nice bounce that we had off of the bottom of the four hour cloud. That's kind of cool when that happens. The Aussie dollar yen um, bought on a pullback to that 84.20 so we're we caught 10 pips on that move right now looks like we are slowing down a little bit in our in our price move since the uh, news came out you know we're, we're coming up on the close at eight o'clock and that's often when we'll see kind of a reversion of the um, of the price action Let's look at the other numbers as we're looking at these here. Doot, 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 doot. So, let's see. CPI index, previous was 0.3. Actual was 0.2 and the consensus was 0.2. So it's just a little bit under. And the... Um, uh, CPI index for food and energy year over year uh, was unchanged one, at 1.8. Okay. And let's see, checking out gold again. What do we got going on here? Um, yeah, still, still kind of hanging around this area. We'll see, you know, usually these kind of extended moves on news, they generally do retrace. So we'll just keep an eye on that. And uh, the uh, dollar yen is certainly um, um, looking at holding this area for right now. We'll just have to see what happens as we move on. Uh, I want to take a look at these levels and relate them to my, my own style of analysis, the, my GAN, GAN analysis. Um, where are we at? Okay. So the short. Now, when I'm looking at this chart, I notice we're at a pivot in time and we are at this major confluent zone of time, price, and momentum. And, and we're at this very accelerated level. So, so I, I already have a very short bias on the New Zealand dollar um, just really because we have kind of a, a, a bearish flag set up here or pennant, whatever you want to call it. But it is a parabolic move on the New Zealand dollar. So 
I do have a short bias here based on this. Now, how does that relate to the cloud? Well, again, when we were talking about these, these levels and how extended they are um, on the news and, how, and the parabolic move, we don't want to trust parabolic moves. They are dangerous. They are very dangerous. Okay. These are sometimes uh, parabolic moves are generally like bull traps and bear traps. It's where, you know, parabolic moves happen because uh, traders who have been waiting too long to get into a trade think they're going to miss out and then they enter in and then, um, you know, they end up losing their shorts in the process. Actually, I need to get a short in on that. There we go. And let's see, we're also looking at, what's another one? Oh, let's actually look at the, uh, I, don't know, I don't know why I don't have gold set up. There. Uh, so here's our, here's our, do, 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 do. Here's our gold area, uh, looking at our, our square of 144. All right, got to readjust it. So we're, we're really kind of trading in between the, this this range here of uh, 1337.19 and 1316.220, sorry, 22. And um, if you can imagine the midpoint between these two lines, that's where we're kind of face some resistance. And, uh, you know, we're looking at more than likely a sell off down to here and trading this range. Um, you know, again, where did we, where was the last angle we broke? Broke. If we remember the rule of angles is that when you break an angle, you will move to test the next one. Um, I don't really consider this to be close enough to test this angle. So we're, the next angle down is, is really below here. That's a ways down. Uh, so we've got to be careful of that. How does that relate to the Ichimoku? I think it'll become more apparent when we see this price retrace here. Um, it doesn't have, I should say, it doesn't have to retrace. Uh, it, it can stay there, but it is weird if these stay elevated. I mean, the, the news was not so dramatic that it warrants these, these rises. But again, the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Okay, and let's look at the euro, euro dollar. Looking at it, um, uh, where are we at? Let's right. make sure that's correct. Okay, so yeah, kind of stopped on this angle. So this is this this is the other forty five, and when I see we're stopped at this angle, we've got these elevated levels in both the RSI and the composite index. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a short there, definitely. Looking at a short, I I don't see a lot of uh, reason. You know, we got really halted at, at this FIB level and this arc kind of just, a, you know, a little bit below that arc and that FIB level. Um, the angle here, you know, we're, we're looking at a short kind of on a break below here to, to see where if there's a lot of strength here yet to... Uh, uh, our fib line from swing to swing that's the 0.618 zone that we're looking at above and so we, we actually could be looking at some tighter range trading because there is a lot of resistance and support amongst this entire zone here so just keep an eye on that and how does that again how does that relate to our uh our uh, cloud well we are currently inside the one the four and the eight so our opinion or our bias from just looking at these price areas from 123.18 to 123.68, we're pretty neutral. We don't have a bias yet. You know, uh, using just the Ichimoku system, not really looking at a strong bias. Now, this is where, you know, advanced kind of trading and experience and looking at things comes into play. When I'm looking at my oscillator down here, okay? This is my composite index. I'm looking at a fairly elevated level, okay? And what happens when, to the Euro, when it has gotten to those levels, it experiences some sell-off. It experiences some selling. And so we're right up against the top of the eight hour cloud 
and we're right up against the the 50% Fib retracement on this chart. And so there's a lot of resistance here at this extended level. So I'm really not seeing a lot of reason for strength here. So I, I do see shorting based on all of this activity above us. And I can correlate that with my analysis over here. Now certainly if we don't if we don't close below this 45, we, should, we could probably be looking at a bullish bias and some consolidation up here before we take another leg up. But for the short term, just looking at these areas, I don't have a very strong uh, uh, bias to the upside. Okay, now looking at our, our dollar yen, where did we find resistance? Well, right at this angle. Yes, con you know, if you've been looking at this type of construct that I've been using over the last couple weeks, uh, this this is kind of a, these are GANs time cycles, harmonic levels, and I've been drawing um, these GAN squares, they call them, um, in the charts. And so we found some resistance up here. Now, I have a huge, huge, huge long bias on the dollar yen. Why? Because we are extremely oversold on the, on, you know, according to the weekly, we are in very good buying conditions. Okay. And I gotta move my chair up here. <clears throat> so this is, you know, looking at this on the weekly, we got like a tweezer bottom here. I'll take, out, take a peek out on the daily, you know, where we are getting a little extended here, but um, certainly we are approaching a kind of a breakout setup. Right now, if we if we even if we close around here for the day, we may trade with higher volume than yesterday, but we're looking at an engulfing candle here. So be on the lookout for that, but bring us that back down to the hourly. Okay, how does that relate to our Ichimoku system? Well, we are still above the one and the four, and we have faced some resistance inside the eight. But again, our buying zones, and this is actually kind of fun to check out. If we go by swing here, let's do a fib of that price range. The cloud down here is within the 618 FIB retracement from this swing low to this swing high. So, and, and, the, and the baseline is at the 50. So we have a couple of re-entries just based on that, okay? So yeah, I have, a, I, have a, I have a pretty good long bias on any pullback down to that area. I look to be adding to it. Euro pound still showing some muted strength here. We'll have to see how much it wants to stay there. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Aussie dollar maybe looking at going long, but we're still very parabolic in this move. We'll have to, we'll, Still want to analyze what happens. Actually, you know, I'm really not looking to take too many trades outside of the ones we talked about in the euro pound and the um, the uh, the the dollar yen at that pullback until probably closer to eleven o'clock on um, on um, eleven o'clock this morning, probably eleven central. That's where I'm really going to be looking at seeing what we may or may not have in store for us. New Zealand dollar still showing a excessive move up. Where are we at here? NZD. Come back to me. There we go. And we are at this. Oh. Where would that go? New Zealand dollar, here we are. Okay, yep, 
we're at this pivot as well and this pivot zone turns into a, a reversal area so we got a pivot in both time and price and momentum so this is a this is a strong rejection zone and that's what we're kind of looking at we have a really accelerated move into it a fairly parabolic move into it so we should be looking at a very uh, strong pullback from this zone okay keep your eyes on that one pound dollar also at a pivot in time facing and we're right up against uh, this arc so I want to kind of bring it down here let's look at our euro pound see what we not euro pound the uh, pound dollar um, do, 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 do. there we are yep above the eight um, looking at where our yeah, our lagging span is still below. Yeah, bit of an extension there. We'll wanna we'll we'll have to see if we're gonna stay above or not. Yeah. So we got some good trades. You know, again, it's a news we had a we had big news come out and we want to be careful of where we go. Uh I'm not again. I'm not a big fan of trading these these very volatile news releases. Um, they are oftentimes uh, dangerous. Got big whipsaws. You know, you if you have active positions, you see them floating all over the place. You get nervous. You get excited. You don't know what to do. Um, so oftentimes, I I just like to sit some of them out. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Let everybody else kind of duke it out, and then. Again, you don't really get a reversion back to the pre-news prices until about an hour afterwards, or sometimes it can take the whole day. Sometimes it can take the whole day. So just be aware of that. Watch out for that. Look out for these moves. Um, we have some, we only we actually only have kind of like three trades put in there. Um, but really, if you're using the Ichimoku system, and you're using it in your trading, using it on the hourly, you should observe when when you're gonna have safe entries or, or unsafe entries, all right? So I'll look at this on the four hour. Extended on the four hour as well. Actually, we're pretty, we're pretty divergent on the four hour as well. So be, be aware of that on the New Zealand dollar. The eight hour, not, not really divergent at all in the eight hour, but on the four and the one, definitely we are a bit divergent. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. Well, you guys all have a great, fantastic day. Have a good rest of your trading week. Have a good uh, 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 look. Have a, have a, look. Hope your the Ichimoku system is is a is a tool that you can use in your tool chest and that's been working out. We're going to continue to use this, and I'm going to kind of correlate it to my own style of of of, of charting and how I like to look at markets. So um, yeah, I uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and we will visit with you all tomorrow. Bye bye.